Hello! Welcome back to my channel. I am sitting on the floor because I like to sit on the floor. It makes me happy. It's very comfortable and this is just going to be a chill vlog. I'm lying. I'm not lying. It is going to be a chill vlog. However, I will be talking about um, conscious parenting or respectful parenting or whatever other words, phrases um, that they have for it. I had a question about it a couple of weeks ago and I figured I would address it. Um, if you're on my Facebook, I post about it a lot. And so I just wanted to go into my reasonings for wanting to do it, um, how it's going so far. This is in no way a guide. This is not in how to. This is just my experience as a mom. Okay, so if you're like, oh, that's wrong. Da -da 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 -da. I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still applying my knowledge and I'm still growing. Okay, okay. All right, so before we get started, go ahead and subscribe down below. Click the notification bell. That way when it does decide to work, you know when my videos are uploading. And yeah, join the family, become a keystone. All right, so we're gonna get started. Okay, um, conscious parenting. Audi is now five. And I've been actively engaging in this type of parenting since she was three years old and it's been quite quite a journey I will say it's very it's very hard um, being a parent alone is hard but undoing a lot of my um, childhood I guess trauma undoing a lot of uh, things that I was used to growing up it's been worth it, but it's also been very testing, especially like for my patients. Um, I share this, uh, I share this upbringing with a lot of black people. I can only speak on black people because I was raised in a black household and I don't really know if everybody was raised similar to us, but the phrase is because I told you so, or do what I say, not as I do. Um, not being able to express your feelings or emotions or your thoughts because it was deemed as talking back. That is the childhood that I'm used to. Granted, I had a way healthier childhood than a lot of my friends um, from what I've learned. Still, there are things that did not help me as I got older. Um, so being raised in that manner, it didn't help me with boundaries. It didn't help me with like self-love, self-respect. It didn't help me with acknowledging my emotions, communicating. Um, all of these are things that I had to learn as an adult. And my biggest reason for choosing to conscious to parent consciously is because of that because I don't want Lottie to have the experience growing up that I had I feel like because I wasn't really prepared I went through a lot of um, unnecessary trauma I let people treat me any type of way because I didn't set boundaries um, I just let a lot of shit slide that wasn't okay and I engaged with people I should have never engaged in I gave people access to me who shouldn't have had access um, and I was in a lot of abusive manipulative and narcissistic relationships that I feel would not have happened if I was given better tools um, and by the way, that's no dig at my parents. I absolutely love my parents. I absolutely acknowledge that they did the best they can. I actually have a very close relationship with both my mom and my dad. So it's like, 
I love them. <laughs> so this is not like, you guys suck. They know that. Um, especially with the way that I choose to parent Lottie now. So I decided to start parenting consciously around the age of three because there was a specific moment when, and I remember it, uh, it was around her bedtime, and I went to reach in for a hug, and she jumped, and I, it, it just, it just took me back, and I was like, why, why, why did she, why did she react like that? Because I, I've never been into whoopings or spankings. I've never been into pops or pow pows. Like if prior to that, Lottie got one from me it was the absolute last resort last resort so it wasn't common even prior to that age um, it was not something that I liked to do like to entertain because I just I just always felt a sense of guilt for doing that to a child because I feel like children are children and they're acting age appropriately um, so when she jumped when I went to give her a hug, I was like, oh, um, I don't like this. And I need to somehow make sure that she feels safe with me, that she feels safe in my arms, that she just knows that mommy, mommy is, is going to be her shield and not her, her abuser because abuse is not just physical, and I say this constantly, it's not just physical, it's also mental, it's also emotional. Kids are the most honest creatures. Kids also can see things physically and spiritually that many adults are not even aware of, and even if they can't express it, I believe that they know a lot more than we give them credit for. Um, for that reason, I also think that we contribute them to knowing certain things, to knowing better, and it's, it's not the same, um, but when, that moment when she jumped, I just was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta fix it, like, cause I'm mom, I gotta fix it, and so, this was before I even knew that this had a word for it. I just was like, if ever there is a time where I feel a sense of like frustration or I feel overwhelmed with parenting or I just feel like I'm at my, my breaking point, I need to go walk away. And anytime I hit that point, I would just go take five minutes to myself and then come back and address the situation. Or I would breathe deeply and still try to talk to her. For a while, it just seemed really, really hard. It felt like I was getting nowhere and I didn't really see the purpose in it. Like it was very, um, it was very, like I felt defeated. Um, and then at the round the time, I just had family members who were like, oh, she's out of control. She shouldn't be acting like this. She's this and she's that. And you just need to beat her. And I was like, you can stay where you at because you're not paying bills. You're not helping take care of her. You're not doing anything but giving me your opinion. And I didn't ask for that. So yeah, so that did not help me in any way, shape or form. And then around that age, I enrolled Carlotta into speech therapy so that she could really like formulate her words because I feel like that would be helpful in her being able to express herself. And we did speech therapy for about a year. She graduated out and she made so much improvement and it did help. Um, I feel like it did help with her, her speaking. Um, if ever she was angry, she'd be like, I'm angry, or I don't wanna talk, or, or just, you know, be able to communicate with me. 
how she was feeling and it since then it has not been an overnight process it's still very been it's still very much been just a little bit frustrating for me it's only me um i don't have help really up here um i'm a physically single mom her and the her father and i are not together we parent different and we don't see eye to eye on parenting. And um, so I know that her ability to transition between both homes and be able to adapt gets frustrating for her. I know that having to deal with two different households gets frustrating and can be emotional for her because mommy is one way daddy is another way um so with that i try to be as understanding as possible give her as much grace as possible i don't yell i don't i don't like yelling I don't feel like I need to yell at her for her to understand. I don't hit her with the words, you know better, or you hear me when I'm talking to you, or um, I don't expect her to listen to me when I say things one time, she's five she's likely not going to listen to things when I say them the first time so a lot of the process is me communicating with her but also being with her in action to help her with things yes she made that mess by herself but she's not going to clean it up by herself so I'm like hey let's go clean up oh I don't want to okay well what if mommy helps you and then we can get it done faster? I provide her with options. Carlotta is not a vegetable person. So I'm like, hey, what would you like for dinner? And she'll go, I want macaroni and cheese or I want pea jelly or I want butter noodles or I want spaghetti. And there's always some type of fruit option. And then when I make her smoothies, I let her pick out what vegetables go in the smoothie with the fruit and she never tastes the vegetables. So a big part of this is letting her know that her input is important, her voice is important, her attentiveness is important, but as well letting her know that she doesn't have to do things alone, she doesn't have to do things by herself and that she does have help and it gets oh man it's it's tiring sometimes because one moment she's very independent and then another moment she wants to be babied so we have to flip flop back and forth between the two and like I said I don't really have help like I have emergency help like if I'm dying type of help but like just being tired or needing some time to myself I don't really have that um so there are days when I am exhausted um and I have to keep ooh hold on ooh forgot what I was saying um, what we're gonna pick up here so my whole <laughs> point as her mom is to make her feel validated make her emotions feel validated um, I think a lot of us assume that because kids don't have to worry about bills and because we have more life experience and, and things that they have no worries, that they have no anxieties, that they don't deal with things, and that couldn't be further from the truth. They have a lot of things that they deal with, a lot of 
emotions that they're dealing with and it's just like at at 29 I'm still trying to learn how to handle my emotions how to cope with certain things how to address other things and how to allow myself to feel and it's just like how do we how do adults have the audacity to tell kids you're okay stop crying you ain't hurt you don't have no worries i don't know why you or oh i'll give you something to cry about like i i i what why um why why would you why would you do that to me that makes no sense um one of my biggest um pet peeves one of the things that i will actually cut people off for is invalidating me is invalidating my emotions gaslighting me i do not deal with those types of people so i i just refuse to make my child feel insignificant i have no intention on demeaning her to exert my my to exert what's, what's the word to exert my power over her power and i use that term very loosely because i don't care to be in power or to be in control i have no intention on invalidating her to make her listen to me i don't threaten her to make her do what i say I don't engage in that behavior at all because I've been talked to like a child from other adults. This is not just even in my childhood. This is in my adulthood where other adults have talked to me this way and I didn't like how it felt. And I genuinely try to treat my daughter the way that I would want people to treat me the whole do as i say not as i do kids don't really listen they don't really listen but they follow our example that's why we find them repeating us repeating our sentiments repeating our our actions how we talk how we walk our mannerisms because they're always watching they're not always listening but they're always watching and because that's something that I always remember I try to absolutely go out of my way to respect my daughter to treat her as an individual to let her know that whatever she's feeling whatever she's thinking that mommy is not mad at her usually I'm not mad at her um I can't really think of many situations where I tell her no she'll be like okay mommy I want to you know go to the park today and if for whatever reason we cannot go to the park I don't even say no it'll just be like all right well we can't do that today but what is another activity that you would like to do in this moment and then how about in two days we can go to the park so it's again me just providing another option for her a lot of times kids just need redirection like i think that's the biggest thing that i've learned with conscious parenting is that a lot of kids need redirection they need um love they need acceptance so my old alternative when lottie would do things that i didn't like was to put her on timeout because i didn't hit her i didn't whoop her i didn't do anything i would be like okay time out take five minutes to yourself um but i think i was talking to my therapist about how frustrating parenting was during these times and she was like a lot of times because she's also a mom she was like a lot of times kids need closeness they need bonding when they're going through their big emotions they don't need to be left alone they actually need to be catered to and i was like let me try it so there was a moment where she did something because <laughs> kids do stuff all the time and and 
granted i'm not really an overreactive parent um i was like carlotta what do you need from me what do you need from me in this moment how can mommy help you feel better how can i help and she was like i need hugs i need kisses and i need cuddles and so i gave her hugs and kisses and we cuddled until she calmed down i let her cry i rubbed her hair because i i believe that carlotta's um love language is physical touch and i noticed that when she's upset that's that's what she needs from me and even though my love language is not physical touch it's actually number three on my list so it's not my favorite i know that in order for me to give lottie the love that she requires she needs that she needs that pat on the back she needs me to hold her hand she needs extra love she needs extra kisses and we have to also remember that our kids have love languages and that it's important to be in tune with our with our babies because it doesn't matter you know the materialistic things that we buy oh well, they got a room full of toys or they got this or they're in programs or i got them their favorite chips and like sometimes none of that matters if you're not loving them in their love language and it's in the same manner that somebody could do everything for us but if they're not catering to our love language it kind of it, it's not registering for us and I just always remember that despite me being 29 and despite her being five she deserves the same amount of love respect understanding empathy and compassion because she exists because she's a human I remember the first time, I love all these memories coming back while I'm telling my cautious parenting story. I remember the first time Carlotta called me Kiara, my name. And I was like, because in general, nobody calls me by my name unless I don't, you know, mess with you, then you gotta call me my name. <laughs> but nobody really calls me my name. So she was like, yeah, I had a good day, Kiara. And I was like, Kiara, that's me and i kind of like froze because another adult looked at me like "Ooh, couldn't be me and i was like yeah but it's me though and then i got in the car and i was like should i be angry should i be upset and it was a very quick thought and after the thought passed i was like no that's your name <laughs> like so she called you your name bro it's literally on your birth certificate like it's your name it's your name the name is something that you go by occasionally it low-key belongs to you and then i was like why do parents have such a hard time with their kids calling them by their names why is that deemed disrespectful? And so in normal fashion, I called my mom and I was like, hey, can I call you Pam? I ask her this all the time. She always says no. She's consistent about that no. Um, and I respect that. Don't agree. I respect it though. And I was like, hey, why can't I call you Pam? We're adults. I'm an adult. You're an adult. We both pay bills. We both take care of our kids you raised me i'm in the progress or, or i'm raising minds now like why can i call you why can i call you pam and she was like because it's disrespectful and i was like but what about what about it is disrespectful if that's your name and she was just like it's just disrespectful and i was like yeah you're not giving me a reason is it because you think you're above me is that the whole dynamic when it comes to parenting and she was low-key like yeah it sounds bad but like yeah she didn't say it sounds bad but i could tell by her demeanor that that is what she felt and i was like okay got it i just gotta call you mom for the rest of my life um but then i was like that's not disrespectful to me 
And Carlotta has called me Kiara Keys, Kiki, Kika, don't call me that. That's a childhood nickname, don't call me that. But like she's called me all of my nicknames, all of my names, and none of it is very triggering for me because it's just like, it's not disrespectful. I don't feel like I'm above my daughter. I don't feel like there will ever be a power struggle because I'm not trying to control her. Um, I don't feel like just because I have years more worth of life experience or more trauma or more whatever because I pay bills or because I work a job or like because I stress out more like I don't that's not validation for her to not be able to call me by my name and majority of the time she doesn't even do it majority of the time it's mommy she might call me bro sometimes which if you've been around me i say bro a lot when i'm home it's bruh but like i say both interchangeably i call carlotta sis i call her ma'am and so instinctively she says those things back to me and it's not as a form of disrespect it's because i call her everything but her name and so she does it back and and that's just what it is and so in this conscious parenting journey it's been a journey not because i'm trying to like just be different in general but because i'm trying to undo things that i was raised upon things that i thought were morals and values because it was a normalcy growing up um and it's just the process is more undoing a knee-jerk reaction of things that i'm used to things that I grew up around things that I still to this day hear from the elders in my family. A lot of people still do not agree with how I parent. I don't give a shit. Um, they know that. And I will check or cut off anybody who thinks that it'll be okay to disrespect me on how I decide to parent my daughter. Um, if I did not ask for your opinion, I don't really care to hear it. And it's not that I'm unwilling to listen. It's that a lot of times when elders are giving their opinion, they're not in it for the right reasons. They're just talking to talk. They're not talking to listen. They're not talking to understand. They're talking because the way that they were raised were different. And they're not really into this generation of parenting. Kids were seen, not heard. They didn't have an opinion. They didn't express themselves. They were robots and they didn't feel a certain way. We're not doing that anymore. And I feel like a lot of my family knows that because don't nobody really be coming for me to my face. I always hear things through the grapevine. Y'all think I don't. I do. I hear everything. Um, but I, I, I truly don't care because I've seen such a difference in the way that Lottie is responding at five she has more boundaries than I've had my entire life I do not force Lottie to talk to people I do not force Lottie to hug people I do not force Lottie to kiss people regardless if they are family or not I do not force her because when you force them you take away their choices you take away their boundaries and a lot of the time the people in our families be the worst ones and kids sense that so if baby girl don't want to hug you or she don't want to speak to you she got a reason even if it doesn't make sense to you even if you don't agree with it it's her reason and that goes for me too like sometimes Carlotta don't want to talk to me Carlotta you want to talk to me no okay well I'm here when you want to talk okay she shake her head okay and in an hour or however long it take her she come and cuddle up with me and that's okay we have to allow kids to be humans and for me that's what it comes down to 
and I still really don't call it like conscious parenting or respectful parenting or anything I'm just like she's a human and she's also a soul having a human experience and that's how I reference myself just a soul having a human experience and if I can help in any way guide her to be more assertive to have that self-love and that self-confidence and all these things that I grew up without then I am doing a damn good job in preparing her for the world that is going to exist after I'm gone and no matter how hard this parenting journey gets I'm going to still be on this road with her on this journey with her truly it's so rewarding um that whole I ain't one of your little friends I could not I swear I could not wait to use that <laughs> when I was younger when I was younger I was like oh I can't wait to tell my kid I ain't one of your little friends but I am I am her friend she's my friend she's my best friend I'm her best friend she is my biggest fan I'm her biggest fan this this necklace that you see me with often if you guys pay attention I have the B she said I had to wear the B and she wears the F it's the half of a heart best friends and they're giraffes because they are my favorite animal and I am absolutely one of her little friends. I love that about our relationship. I love that we love. I love that we laugh together. I love that we have conversations together. I love that we communicate. I love that she trusts me and I trust her. I love that she looks out for me and I look out for her and I don't lean on her for emotional support. I am still her mom. At the end of the day, I'm still her mom. But we have an open and loving relationship and I pray that as she grows older that this continues to be a safe space for her so that she never feels judged so that she never feels like oh I can't tell mom that because she's going to get mad or that she's just in general able to be open with me because there are situations where I wish that I was brave enough to be open or I didn't feel like I could say certain things be a certain way be myself in certain mannerisms and 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 characteristics that I still struggle with being expressive about and I don't want that for her I want her to know that home is safe that mommy is safe whether she's five or whether she's 23 I want to have that relationship with her forever um, that's my baby <laughs> that's my baby and I'm gonna stick beside her I'm gonna stick beside her even if it look crazy to you, makes sense to us. And that's that's what matters. So yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the description box. If you're also on your own conscious parenting journey, let me know how that's going for you. I follow a lot of groups on Facebook. Sometimes I'm really hard on myself because I'm not perfect. But I'm so grateful that my daughter loves me and that I love her and that I'm not afraid to apologize. I will apologize till I'm blue in the face. And she's like, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. And I'm like, I know, but I, I apologize. Will you forgive me? Mommy did not mean to react like that. Mommy didn't mean to do that. Mommy didn't mean to whatever. Like she genuinely gets an apology from me. And that's another big important thing that I feel like I did not touch on, but apologize to your kids even if your kids are 25 30 they probably need to hear that apology from you even though they haven't expressed that people don't forget things kids don't forget things they carry it they internalize it and it comes out as we become adults 
so yeah i'm gonna leave it right here i think that i would like to pick up and talk about this again as we further along on our journey but um maybe we'll do like a q a if you guys you know want to interact on instagram or whatever so yeah okay um hmm, that's all i got okay love you bye